Every now and then, moments arise that redefine the very fabric of our existence. And now, we sort of stand at the brink of such a moment. The dawn of AGI. It's here. So OpenAI has been cooking for a while now. And every once in a while, they sort of serve us a little bit of what they're cooking. So keep this in mind throughout this entire video. Everything that I'm about to show you is just the tip of the iceberg. There's a lot more to come. And there's a lot of internal work that goes on in these large AI corporations that is kept completely secret, including in Google DeepMind. They seem to do a better job at keeping some of these things secret than even some of the biggest companies, than even Apple. For example. And you gotta keep in mind, it's not completely out of their wish. It's on government directive. It's because they're explicitly instructed and required to follow careful protocol before releasing some of these technologies, simply because of the massive scale of impact that much of these technologies could have if they're released carelessly. So think about Sora, for instance. It's pretty much ready. You've seen some old men use it on live streams to generate video, but it hasn't been released yet. Well, why? Because they're holding back for fear of its effect on the US election. So keep some of these things in mind. Now, as the horizon of AGI draws nearer, the question isn't if our world will change, but what it will shape up to look like. Considering just how much closer it appears to be now than, for instance, four months ago, in this video, I'll show you what's coming. We'll discuss OpenAI's clear plans on exactly what's going to happen and how we can deal with it. And then towards the end of the video, we'll look at some really, really important changes that you need to start making to your life and business right now to prepare for this. Because the value of a lot of the things that we've considered valuable for the longest time is about to drop to absolute zero. A lot of the things that you could change thousands of dollars for right now is about to drop to nearly nothing or at the very most a $20 GPT plus subscription. So I'll take you through a lot of this really really slowly. I'll point out the most important things, what to expect, how to expect it, why it's inevitable and most importantly what you can do right now to start preparing for this. So just keep in mind this series is called Get Prepared. So while we are going to discuss some really really interesting things, I maintain don't stress or worry. Instead take insight and start to slowly implement the changes that we discuss to help you prepare for what's happening. So let's take a look. Now, Moore's Law for Everything. This is a blog post that Sam Altman and tens of other prominent researchers co-authored. It's not particularly new, but also not too many people have heard or read about it. It has about five hearts, and in them, Altman and co outline the future and all the massive changes they expect to occur in the post-AGI world. So throughout this video, as I call out OpenAI's plans, I will be taking a lot of them from this blog. But we need to understand the scale of these AI advancements compared to the rest of human history. Just how massive a shift are some of these changes? Well, Google published a blog, Millions of New Materials Discovered with Deep Learning, where they present an AI tool, Genome, that has discovered 2.2 million new crystals, including 380,000 stable materials that could power future technologies. They said that these discoveries are worth 800 human years. So at the pace at which we typically perform chemical experimentation, this AI discovered in a year what we would have discovered in 800. Now the scale of this might go over a lot of people's heads, so I'll try to point out just how important this is. So one really important discovery that was made around roughly 100 years ago from today is quantum mechanics. So Albert Einstein uses the actual term quantum mechanics for the first time ever in 1924, so pretty much exactly 100 years ago. Now since then, due to our understanding of quantum theory, what have we discovered? What have we used this technology to discover? So lasers, transistors, LEDs, MRI scans, GPS, and obviously quantum computers computers have all been discovered as a result of our understanding of quantum mechanics that was discovered roughly 100 years ago. Get these technological advancements and multiply them by 8. So if you did that, what would we have today? Chances are we'd be on Mars by now. We'd have probably cured disease as a whole, learned how to time travel, teleport, and would probably occupy many other planets. So all that is what this robot can do in a single year. This rapid advancement in technology represents just a small sliver of the transformative power of the AI revolution, enabling machines and by by extension humans to operate on scales that are unimaginable with the current economic framework. And amidst all this mania, here comes OpenAI saying, well, we foresaw this. We knew this was coming and well, here's how to deal with it. So what is coming? What are we dealing with here? So according to OpenAI, software that can think and learn will do more and more of the work that people do now. Even more power will shift from labor to capital. And a recursive loop of innovation as these smart machines themselves help us to make smarter machines will accelerate the revolution's pace. Now, we've seen this in the past where it would appear that the latest generation of machine learning models are being built using previous machine learning models. Now, while Sora doesn't completely represent this, Sora was trained on synthetic data. But an even better example of this would be active learning, the concept in QSTAR and a lot of other breakthroughs lately showcasing that these machines can actually help each other think better so they can basically train each other. And this is sort of what we're talking about here when we talk about a recursive loop of innovation as these smart machines themselves help us make smart 
smarter machines. Now, it's easy to go and notice, but this statement here is that they help us make smarter machines. But how close is that to them simply creating themselves, right? As these smart machines themselves create even smarter machines. So that's not too distant. And that's just sort of how clear it is that we're kind of dancing on a knife's edge with this sort of stuff. But as a result of all of this, three crucial consequences will follow. So one, this revolution will create phenomenal wealth. So the price of many kinds of labor will fall towards zero once sufficiently powerful AI joins or replaces the workforce. And then two, the world will change so rapidly and drastically that an equally drastic change in policy will be needed to distribute this wealth and enable more people to pursue the lives that they want. So now we kind of find ourselves in this weird position where machines are doing a lot of the work that we initially used to do, which means a lot of human labor has fallen to the value of pretty much zero. In that situation, how do we address the need for growth? How do we address the need for people to make money? And how do we deal with some of the things that arise as a result of that kind of economy, which at this point right now, it's important to note is unstoppable. So in truth, at the moment, there's really no going back. These machines are going to get smarter and smarter and smarter. Newer and newer technologies are going to be built because nobody's really willing to stop and as such be left behind. So weakness is the greatest problem in this particular situation because there's a lot of money to be made with AI and there's a lot of power to be gained from it with countries participating in it. So no country wants to be left behind in this race. And so for that very reason, there's sort of no turning back from now. But how do we deal with the new world in the new state in which it exists? And apparently this concept is capitalism for everyone. So you have these massive companies that have all this money and are basically automating the world and don't need human labor that much. How do you ensure that the wealth from those companies is properly distributed? The traditional way to address inequality has been by progressively taxing income. So for a variety of reasons, this hasn't worked very well. It will work much, much worse in the future. While people will still have jobs, many of those jobs won't be ones that actually create a lot of economic wealth in the way that we think about it today. As AI produces most of the world's basic goods and services, people will be freed up to spend more time with the people they care about, care for people, appreciate art and nature, or work towards social good. So as opposed to taxing the labor of these companies, we should focus more on taxing capital. And we should use these taxes as an opportunity to directly distribute the ownership and wealth to the citizens. In other words, the best way to improve capitalism is to enable everyone to benefit from it as a direct equity owner. Now keep in mind, this particular idea isn't particularly new. They do point this out in the blog, but they also point out that it's just newly feasible. So it wasn't possible in the past. Now they go on further here on the details and exactly how this is going to be done, but I'm going to go ahead and stop here and switch to the very next topic. So how do you prepare for something of this sort? How do you prepare for technology like this? How do you prepare for the world in its new state? What do you do? Well, we all know that AI is going to be performing these tasks. So the very first thing to do is quite ironically to build AI, particularly AI agents, autonomous systems that operate on their own and try to avoid the need for human instruction because human instruction, keep in mind, still is labor. And this is sort of already happening. So there's a few companies that are focusing right now on building agents. OpenAI, for instance, is working on the ability for AI to sit directly on your computer and do the operations that human beings do. That is going to be a massive, massive shift when it finally comes out. But you can already start to build technologies like this and already start to make from it right now, which is going to be really, really important. And then the second thing is to build the services on which these systems operate. So AI AI needs computational services, it needs frameworks like functions, like what Zapier provides. And so the goal here is to build these tools so that you can sort of provide the framework, the service that will continue to be needed even when AI is basically operating the world. If you are the one providing the computation needed for that AI, you're still giving value. And so the final thing, the major takeaway from all this is that you need to find a way to give value in this new world. What is the new value that you can give in this new world, considering the fact that Lebo is no longer going to be considered valuable. It's really a tricky question and I'm very, very interested in hearing exactly what you guys have to say about this down in the comment section. Let me know your mind, speak out and let's have a sort of mini discussion in there. Now, thanks a bunch for watching. Hopefully this video has been super informative. Make sure you hit the subscribe button on your way out. It really, really helps me a lot as we head towards a thousand subscribers. I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.